Thanks to Kaiki for sponsoring today's video. Thomas and Friends is a global icon. Everyone everywhere knows at least something about the little blue tank engine, and the show is one of the most well-known pieces of children's media out there. That being said, when a show lasts for 24 seasons and 37 years, 76 if we count the books, there are bound to be pieces of information that just slip between the cracks. My name is the Thomas Cynic, and today we're going to be looking at 101 Thomas facts that you may not know. Maybe keep a tally and tell me how many you knew in the comments. Without further ado, let's get into it. Number 1. We all know the classic Thomas theme song, but did you know that originally the theme was going to be very, very different? Instead, the theme song was going to be the tune that we now know as Toby's theme. Take a listen. Imagine if that started off every episode. Although I like the piece of music, I do prefer the theme we have today. Number 2. Only one engine on the Fat Controller's Railway can claim that they've been to space. That one engine is Stanley a very average character from the best Thomas movie in history, The Great Discovery. Stanley was sent to space by a dedicated father, who sent his son's favourite engine into the stratosphere, equipped with a GPS tracker to find it when it touched down again. This all took place in 2014, and it was quite the deal in the fandom at the time. Number 3. The episode Henry's Forest from Season 3 was famously hated by Audrey, but you might be surprised to find out that this episode was actually written by Andrew Brenner for a Thomas magazine that came out shortly before the episode aired. That's right, 14 seasons before he joined the writing team, Brenner had already made his mark on Thomas. That being said, he was a little disgruntled to find that Oldcroft and Mitten didn't include him on the credits and took the story as their own. Number 4. Splatter and Dodge are quite unfortunate characters. They only appeared once in the history of the franchise, in Thomas and the Magic Railroad, a mediocre movie that didn't perform too well. However, they were set to return in Season 6, Calling All Engines, Day of the Diesels, and The Great Race, but their roles in every single one of those were cancelled. Number 5. In the entire run of the show, there are only three titles that have ever been repeated for episodes. Fish, which appeared in both Season 4 and Season 8, Dirty Work, which appeared in both Season 2 and Season 11, and Thomas in Trouble, which appeared in Seasons 1 and 11 respectively. Number 6. Season 8 is the only season in the show's history not to introduce a new character. All of the other 23 seasons introduced at least one, with Season 4 introducing the most at around 15 characters who are named or have speaking roles. Number 7. Thomas has had seven different narrators over the years, and at least three could be considered famous. Ringo Starr, narrator of Season 1 and 2, was one of the Beatles. Alec Baldwin, a famous American actor, narrated seasons 5 and 6 and had a starring role in Thomas and the Magic Railroad. Pierce Brosnan, narrator of The Great Discovery, is a famous actor who played James Bond at one point. Other narrators include George Carlin, a popular American comedian, and Mark Morahan. Number 8. Every tenth season of the show, of which there were only two at the time of recording, those being seasons 10 and 20, an extra two episodes are added to the season to celebrate the landmark. Both of the mentioned seasons had a total of 28 episodes, in contrast to the fairly standard 26. Number 9. Although Thomas is understandably the main character in most of the franchise's 14 movies, Percy, James, Gordon and Emily have all played very major roles in specials over the years. Percy was the main character in Day of the Diesels and Tale of the Brave, James was a joint lead with Thomas in Journey Beyond Sodor, Gordon played a main role in The Great Race, as did Emily in Calling All Engines. Number 10. The classic seasons of the show like to make songs about its core cast of characters. Of the eight main leads in the model seasons, five have songs about them. These are Real Useful Engine, Ode to Gordon, James the Really Splendid Engine, Toby, and Emily. Percy's Seaside Trip is also somewhat about Percy, but I don't really count it. Number 11. One of the worst and most notorious writers on the show, that being Sharon Miller, actually voiced the Queen in Thomas and the Royal Engine, years after she left the writing team. She was also made head of voice acting a while before this, which she certainly did better than the writing. 
Number 12. The first Railway Series book, The Three Railway Engines, introduced the characters of Edward, Henry and Gordon. Originally, however, Henry's debut story was going to take place on a completely separate railway from Edward and Gordon's. It was only at the request of the publishers that Audrey wrote a fourth story to tie them all together. Imagine what would have happened if they'd stayed on separate, unnamed railways. Number 13. During the filming of Thomas and the Magic Railroad, the prop of James used for the movie actually fell off the set during the smelter scene, just like Diesel 10 had intended in the movie. The prop was actually damaged, and although it was repaired, the minor scratches can still be seen in a couple of shots. Number 14. The TV show has way more branch lines on Sodor than the books do. In the books, there are only six branch lines on the island, but in the show, there are almost three times that, with 14 branch lines, not including the two additional loop lines as well. Number 15. Most in the fandom will know that Hero of the Rails, Thomas's movie for 2009, was the first fully CGI production that the show ever had. However, the movie was originally going to be filmed in the style of season 12, with model environments and props, but with CGI animated faces for the engines. Given how horrifying season 12 looked, I'm very glad this was changed early on in the planning of the movie. Number 16. In the TV show, there is no number 13 engine on Sodor. Emily received a number 12 in later years, and Charlie is number 14. 13 truly is an unlucky number on Sodor, it would seem. However, a magazine-only character called 13, after his number, does occupy this spot. He's not referenced anywhere else, though, so he's certainly an oddity in the franchise. Number 17. Only four real-life engines have actually been featured in the show. The most famous of these is the Flying Scotsman, arguably the most well-known steam engine in the world. City of Truro, the first engine to go 100 miles an hour, maybe, has also appeared. Stepney is a real engine too, as is Stephen, who was based off the famous Stevenson's rocket. Number 18. Tidmouth Sheds is actually the only location that appears in every season. You'd think the famous Knapford station would have this claim to fame as well, but it didn't appear at all in season 5, which is the only season not to feature it. Number 19. Let's take a short break from facts about the show and turn our attention to the Railway series, the books that Thomas was based on. In the early books in particular, the author, the Reverend W. Audrey, and the illustrator, C. Reginald Dolby, actually like to spread Easter eggs throughout the illustrations. These include adverts for other Railway series books in stations and shops, as well as numerous plays on words and puns. Sir Topham Hat is the obvious example here, but a lesser known one is that the big engine saying Edward has black wheels is a reference to the slang word blackleg, which refers to someone who continues to work during a strike, just like Edward. Number 20. Wilbert Audrey's son, Christopher, continued to write for the Railway series a while after his father left off at Book 26. Christopher's favourite engine is Toby, since Toby's real-life inspiration was the first engine he went on the footplate of as a child. His father, however, had no favourite engine, claiming that the engines were like a family to him, and that it would be wrong for him to choose a favourite because of that. Number 21. Of the original 26 books, five are about the narrow-gauge Scarlowy Railway. Other than those, however, only two take place off the Northwestern Railway, where our main characters live. One is Mountain Engines, which takes place on the Cully Fell Mountain Railway, and the other is Small Railway Engines, which takes place on the Arlesdale Miniature Railway. How many railways can fit on Sodor? Well, I suppose one more can. Yours. This video was sponsored by Kaiki, a Thomas & Friends merchandise store with insane variety. If you have an existing collection or want to start one, Kaiki is the place to go. Since the Christmas season is in sight, it might be the perfect opportunity to shop for a Thomas-loving family member or friend. The range in their store is mind-boggling. They have motorised, wooden railway, die-cast, minis, the list goes on. Their prices are also very reasonable, particularly when compared to many eBay and Amazon sellers. They're constantly adding new items as well, so even if a particular item hasn't appeared on their store yet, chances are it will in the future. The link to their store is in the description. Use the code THOMASCYNIC, all in caps, for 10% off any item. You can save money on quality merch and support my channel through this as well. Again, massive thanks to Kaiki for sponsoring this video. Number 22. One character named after a real person was actually Gordon. Gordon was the name of a rude boy on Audrey Street who would play with Chris, but was always a bit bossy. I wonder if he knows about his fame today. Number 23. Toby, Trucks and Trouble was the first book in the Railway series not to have the words engine or engines in its title. 
this was the 32nd book in the series. In total, out of 42 books, the series only ever had 6 books without this style of title. Number 24. Moving back away from the books, let's talk about some of Thomas's associated shows. In the early days, Thomas had a sister show called Tugs, revolving around a fleet of talking tugboats, with even more mature plotlines and characters than Thomas. The Unlucky Tug recently made a great video about Tugs, so if you want to know more about that gem of a show, I'd recommend checking there. Thomas also had a spin-off show called Jack and the Pack, however, it was basically as short-lived as Tugs was, despite featuring Thomas and Percy quite a bit. Number 25. And now for a very little known fact. Before the TV show ever began, Andrew Lloyd Webber was going to make a musical about Thomas and the cast of the Railway series. However, this was never realised. That being said, the books did go on to inspire the name of Lloyd Webber's company, The Really Useful Group. Number 26. Thomas has had so many reboots over its history. Four, in fact. Season 8 changed the show from the general vision of the classics, Season 13 changed the visual style completely, Season 22 brought in Thomas's stupid adventure around the world, and Season 25... well, we don't talk about it around here. Number 27. Can engines be related? Well, yes. Essentially, the way it seems to work in the Thomas universe is that if you are an engine built by the same person and are the same class as another engine, you're siblings. If you're built by the same person but aren't the same class, you're cousins. So essentially, Rebecca and Dennis are cousins. The more you know. Number 28. Although many fans rightfully hate this, it is somewhat established in the TV show that Edward has a prejudice against Cranes. He shows open dislike towards both Harvey and Rocky in two pretty bad episodes, and this is very out of character for him. There was also an episode where he was hit by Cranky, so maybe that's where his dislike stems from? One can only guess. Number 29. Thomas, other than in one case, never incorporated magic into its show. However, there are two magical engines in the universe. One comes from Thomas and the Magic Railroad, a movie that basically nobody likes, and one comes from Season 9, a season that again, sadly, nobody seems to like except me. Lady was likely named after Lady Hat, the Fat Controller's wife, and Proteus shares his name with a Greek sea god. Number 30. Sodor, in the books and presumably the show too, has real-life rail connection across the Walney Channel to the town of Barrow in Furness. You can go and visit this town and the railway where Edward supposedly worked before coming to Sodor. Number 31. In June 2007, some Thomas products were tested in China and were found to contain lead in the red and yellow paint. Because lead dust is very toxic when paint chips, this was understandably a huge deal at the time and became dubbed as the lead paint crisis in the fandom. Number 32. Rusty is a narrow gauge diesel who works on the Scarlet Railway. Although generally considered a male character, the creator of the show, Britt Allcroft, originally intended to make him gender neutral due to a lack of female characters in the series at that point. Various international dubs of seasons 5, 9 and 16 all refer to Rusty as female, although some of this was later corrected. Number 33. Many of the original props used in the model seasons are still nearly intact. Some have been mistreated by various companies, some are in Japan, and some are even owned by collectors on Twitter who work to restore them and keep them safe. However, some are still missing, so if you have any idea where one might be, make sure to tell someone. Number 34. Probably the most famous goof in a Thomas episode is in the Season 1 episode, Thomas and the Trucks. In early American releases, a technician can clearly be heard saying, look out for the train, with the sound and music muted as he says this. Look out for the train. I have no idea how this got through the checking process, but it is a fun goof. Number 35. The longest Thomas production ever made is the aforementioned Thomas and the Magic Railroad director's cut, running to 1 hour 50 minutes before several changes cut off 25 of those minutes due to test audience complaints and a supposedly overcomplicated plot. Given how complicated the version we got is, one can only imagine how crazy the original was. Several versions of the original script, however, can be found online. Number 36. A lot of famous people around the world are, or were, fans of Thomas. Here are some that you may not know. James May, Pete Waterman, Charles, the Prince of Wales, Jimmy Carter, and Tom Hanks all seem to have had Thomas as an important part of their lives at some point. Number 37. 
Only one railway series book does not have four stories in it. That book is Henry the Green Engine, which features five stories instead of the ordinary quartet. Of all the books though, this one probably deserved the extra story, since Henry's arc is so complex and couldn't even be told in one book. Number 38. Thomas's first season was actually shot on a very tight budget. We'll be talking a little more about this later, but plastic artificial grass was used for many of the set pieces, and there wasn't much running water either. And yet, the look of Sodor still looks very believable, even if Season 2 was to drastically improve upon it. Other seasons shot on tight budgets were Season 7, 23 and 24. Number 39. Of all the countries in the world, you might be surprised to find out that Thomas actually has a massive following in Japan. Japan is one of the big nations of the world when it comes to Thomas, up there with Britain and the States. Hiro was one of the first characters introduced, who was very obviously representing a different, non-English nationality. And the Hara Model Railway Museum is also located in Japan, where many of the original props are now stored. Number 40. Speaking of Japan, the Japanese dubs of the show were the first to have a full and varied voice cast. Whereas most of the world just had one narrator telling the stories in the model seasons, Japan had separate voice actors for each characters pretty much from day one. Very impressive. Number 41. Thomas was originally going to be a J-50 tank engine, a very different look to how Thomas now looks as an E-2 Billington locomotive. Thomas was initially modelled off a toy the Reverend Audrey made for his son, which certainly looks a lot more like a J-50 than an E-2. If the design had been kept, Thomas would certainly have looked like a different engine, and in some ways, he would have been one. Number 42. From seasons 8 to 12, only four episodes didn't actually feature Thomas. If you know all of these, I'll be seriously impressed. The episodes with absolutely no Thomas in them are Squeak, Rattle and Roll, Duncan Drops a Clangor, Scarlowy Storms Through, and Wash Behind Your Buffers. Number 43. Surprisingly, only three railway series books have had every story in them adapted separately in the same order that they were in the book. Those three books were Tank Engine Thomas Again, Edward the Blue Engine, and Gallant Old Engine. Number 44. Out of the Flat Controller's first 11 engines in the railway series, only two of them never appear to have travelled on Thomas's branch line. These are Henry, number 3, and Oliver, number 11. Most other characters have either been seen or mentioned as having travelled along one of the show's main branch lines. Number 45. Each of the engines have a very memorable main theme, but one of the most varied is Percy's. In the first three seasons alone, his theme was played in over 20 different variations, even Thomas didn't get as much range as that. Number 46. During seasons 2 to 7 of the show, Mike O'Donnell and Junior Campbell, the composers, allegedly thought about changing the theme song of the show, but the plans were ultimately discarded when Britt Olcroft and David Mitten put their foot down and said no change was necessary. Number 47. In the railway series universe, Wilbert Audrey, the author of the books, was actually the publicity manager for the Northwestern Railway for a brief period of time. He was also immortalised in the role of the Thin Clergyman, one of the rescuers who searched for Duke and visited the Arlesdell Miniature Railway. Number 48. The Thin Clergyman was based on Audrey, and the Fat Clergyman was also based on a real person. This person was the Reverend Teddy Boston, a good friend of Wilbert's, who was a clergyman at one point as well, and also shared Wilbert's love for railways. He helped Wilbert build his model railway too. Number 49. A couple of characters in Thomas have not been given names, only numbers. These are mostly railway series characters or magazine characters, but the main ones are 13, 16, 98462, and 87546. I suppose you could also count Diesel 10. Number 50. Speaking of Diesel 10, he is probably named like that because he is the 10th diesel engine on Sodor at the time of his introduction. Bert Allcroft, creator of the character, denies this, but it is a funny coincidence. The nine diesels to arrive before Diesel 10 were Diesel, Daisy, Boko, Mavis, Rusty, Derek, Ari, Bart, and a Class 40. Number 51. Scar Louie was the first engine to ever arrive on Sodor. He came to work on the Scar Louie Railway all the way back in 1806, over a hundred years before the first season of the show, or even the first railway series book, takes place. Talk about a voice of experience. Number 52. In the railway series book Mountain Engines, the unfortunate mountain engine Godred is said to have been cannibalised for his parts, getting smaller and smaller until nothing was left. Godred is the only engine in the universe that we know of this happening to, and if the tale is true, it's certainly the series' most gruesome fate. However, it is actually based on a real incident, 
one I'd recommend reading up on because it's very interesting. Number 53. Some trucks on the island of Sodor are sentient, and some are not. At least in the model seasons, there doesn't seem to be any logic deciding which trucks or road vehicles have faces. The design of the trucks' faces also changes more than any other group of characters in the show. These guys have three or four different designs across the show's timeline. Number 54. Toby's old railway was in a different location to the books in the show. In the books, it was in East Anglia, heavily inspired by the Wisbeck and Upwell tramway. In the show, it was actually on Sodor, and is reopened in Season 5. Number 55. Stepney, the number 55 engine on the Isle of Sodor, seems to have a past history with the Ironworks twins, Ari and Bart, as referenced in the episode Stepney Gets Lost. Apparently, the twins once tried to scrap Stepney, but failed, and they see the events of the episode as their revenge. Thankfully, they are thwarted in their second attempt as well. Number 56. The map of the mid Sodor Railway, shown in the episode Sleeping Beauty, is actually a map of the Isle of Wight's railway network, simply flipped upside down. In the books, the mid Sodor Railway was partially based off the real-life railways, the Chorus and the Festiniog Railway. Number 57. In the original cut of Thomas and the Magic Railroad, Michael Angelis, who had narrated the past couple of seasons for the UK, was going to voice Percy and James too, but was actually dropped in favour of female voice actors. James's voice sounds good in the movie, but I can't quite get behind Percy's. Number 58. The mid Sodor Railway had a lot of engines that came and went. There's an excellent video about these engines by Luke Ryan, which I think I linked in the description, if I remember. Other than the main protagonists from the railway, engines called Albert, Jim, Tim, the mine engine, Alfred, Jerry, John, Jennings, and Atlas worked on the railway at some point. These were all constructed for the Reverend Audrey's model layout of the mid Sodor. Go and watch Luke's video once you're done, it's very informative. Number 59. We've mentioned Jack and the Pack, but there was actually a character slated to appear in the spin-off that never made it to the screen. That character's name was Nigel, a lorry that was never included in any scripts and was therefore dropped. He may have been named after the director of photography for the spin-off, Nigel Permain. Number 60. Sharon Miller was certainly a poor writer, but she did have plans to bring both Duke and Derek back in seasons 15 and 16 respectively. Duke's role was cut for unknown reasons, but Derek was changed because in the script, Miller referred to him as Paxman, which is another name for the character. However, the animators thought she meant Paxton and subbed him in instead. Gosh dang it. Number 61. Thomas's second theatrical film is just around the corner, perhaps, but there were plans for a 2010 film called The Adventures of Thomas that never really took off. The film would have been set in the war and used a combination of live action and CGI. The film was sadly cancelled after being pushed back to a late 2012 and then 2014 release. One interesting thing to note is that Wet Digital, a very prestigious company, would have supplied the CGI element for the film. Number 62. The show has used three fonts in its title sequence over time, which can be found online in some capacity at least. These are Bevan, Rockwell, and Flange BQ. Number 63. The season 9 character, Dennis, was actually going to return again in Day of the Diesels, but was replaced by Norman because Nitrogen wanted more merch. I'm noticing a pattern here. First Splatter and Dodge, now Dennis. The interesting thing, however, is that only one of Dennis's class was ever made, so Dennis and Norman can't really exist together in the universe. Number 64. During the filming of the season 7 episode, Bill, Ben and Fergus, Fergus's flywheel was damaged. This was what stopped him from appearing again and in certain shots elsewhere in the season, you can see the lengths the team went to to conceal the flywheel from view. Salty Stormy Tail is the main example of this, where several shots had to be altered for this reason. Number 65. Barry the Rescue Engine is an engine you might never have heard of. That's understandable, because he was a planned character for the Railway series that never made it to the pages of the books. Wilbert stopped writing at book 26, but a 27th book was originally planned to focus on Barry. Number 66. After the events of the first Railway Series book, Henry was actually painted blue. It's quite possible that blue and red were initially going to be the standard livery for the Northwestern Railway, but this was changed and the engines are all different colours as a result. Number 67. An interesting detail that you might not have noticed is that the Season 5 episode, Horrid Lorry, is actually written as a horrifying look into the past. Here we see history basically repeating itself as Toby, the viewpoint character, 
sees the industries of Sodor taken over by lorries that would have been very similar to the ones that eventually spelled death for his old line. Thankfully, the lorries didn't manage to strike twice, but it's a very sad and compelling story when you think about it. Number 68. Kelly the Crane is pretty much confirmed to have developed a PTSD for strong winds, due to an incident where he was blown over. The Jack and the Pack episode Kelly's Windy Day shows him overcoming this, but it's interesting that he's one of the only characters to show this in the franchise. Number 69. The characters of Molly, Rosie, and Madge were introduced at least partially to quell complaints for parents that Thomas and Friends was sexist due to having the majority of its cast as male. Emily was moved to Tim the Sheds in Calling All Engines for similar reasons, and of course there were some changes made in Bubba for the exact same ones too. Number 70. Mighty Mac, the double-ended Fairly engine introduced in Season 9, is the only character in the show who has two faces, and two engines inside of him. Whether the two are one person, or are completely separate people like conjoined twins, we'll probably never know. Number 71. Speaking of engines with more than one face, in the railway series, the engines of the Cold Eiffel Railway all have two faces, one on the back of their cabs and the other one on the front of their smoke box like normal. This is just so weird. Their coaches also serve as lookouts and have a very close relationship with the engines they help. So one could almost say that these engines have three pairs of eyes. Number 72. Engines in both the books and the show can grow facial hair, including mustaches and beards. I don't know how this works, but Iron Duke from the Railway series and Etienne from the show are fine examples. I wonder if they need to shave. Number 73. Of 14 Thomas movies, it might surprise you to realise that only six have had antagonists, and only one of those antagonists has been in more than one movie. Diesel 10 is that antagonist, serving as the villain for both Magic Railroad and Air the Diesels. Spencer was an anti-hero turned villain in Hero of the Rails, Sailor John was a menacing presence in Lost Treasure, Vinny was the antagonist in The Great Race, and Frankie and Hurricane had a journey beyond Sodor as threatening villains until the end, sadly. Number 74. Season 6 was the first season of the show to increase to a widescreen aspect ratio. All the previous seasons had been shot in a narrow frame, and so the viewing ratio was completely different. After season 6, however, the aspect ratio would only change minutely a couple of times afterwards, so beyond this point, it stayed pretty consistent. Number 75. Bertram, a character originally introduced in season 5, had a complete design overhaul due to tight budget. He was originally going to be a tank engine with an unknown design, but was changed last second to use Duke's model, repainted, with Smudger's face. Number 76. Mavis, for a mere secondary character, speaks a ridiculous amount in the TV series. From her debut in Season 3, all the way to Season 21, she has a speaking role in each and every season. However, all three Bubba seasons, interestingly, barely have her even in minor cameo roles. Kind of ironic with what they did to the Steam team, don't you think? Number 77. In the Railway series, the town of Kildane is nearby a set of standing stones. However, in the iOS book, these stones are said to have been the centre of a cult. Pretty creepy, particularly when you realise that Kildane's name translates to Church of the Devil in Sudrian. Number 78. Andrew Brenner's favourite character are Bill, Ben, Toby and James. Abby Grant, a writer of some of the better stories in seasons 6 through 12, has said she has a soft spot for Percy. Number 79. Some of you may know this one if you've watched the oldest public video on my channel, but Thomas and the Magic Railroad was originally going to feature many more songs than the final cut had. These included classic songs like Night Train, Thomas's Anthem, and the Freaking Island Song, as well as unreleased original songs called The Whistling Song and Girl in Green. Number 80. Sticking with the Tatma theme, the characters from Tugs were actually going to make a cameo appearance in the movie. Thomas was going to take a train by the seaside, and the Tugs would be there, perhaps with speaking roles. However, this was cut for unknown reasons. Perhaps the props were lost by this point, or perhaps the writers felt the scene was unnecessary. Number 81. According to the Question Time with Sir Topham Hatt audio archive, engine abuse is very much a thing, and a society for preventing it exists, called the Train Spotter Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Engines. I wonder what they would have had to say about Henry's tunnel incident. Number 82. Sir Topham Hatt was actually a school dropout. He left school at the age of 14 and went to work at Swindon Engineering Works, manufacturing the coffee pot engines before rising the ranks to become controller of the Northwestern. Number 83. Let's talk about coaches for a bit. 
In Season 12 concept art, Annie and Clarabelle's faces were going to be separate from their actual carriage, completely changing the design from what we'd seen in the past. To be honest though, I actually quite like this idea. It makes them fit better with the other coaches in my opinion. Number 84. In the Hit and Galane eras, it seemed a bit like each engine was going to get a personal rake of coaches. Emily was given colour matching green ones in her debut, and Gordon received blue ones in Season 10. However, if this was going to go anywhere, the concept was dropped. Number 85. Percy and the Magic Carpet from Season 8 is certainly a very unusual episode. Despite not having a very strong story, and frankly, a weird concept, this was Abby Grant's favourite episode to write. She had to, I quote from her website, fight all the way to the top to get it made. Most people working on the show were convinced that the carpet wouldn't work without CGI rendering, only for the model department to prove them wrong. Number 86. Many ghost engines supposedly exist on Sodor. However, the fact that they're in Legend at all is somewhat confusing. Although not a fact as such, it's heavily implied that there are other ways for engines to die than scrap, and that this is a somewhat different process. A railway series illustration in Stepney the Bluebell engine also shows three locomotives at varying points in the scrapping process. Brutal. Number 87. The number 12 spot on Sodor was vacant for an incredibly long time. All the way through the classics, Hit, Miller and Brenner eras, Emily never actually got a number. However, she finally received the physical number 12, which it seemed she had been invisibly bearing ever since season 8. Number 88. Diesel 10 was initially going to speak with a Russian accent. However, as with most things related to Magic Railroad, the test audience screwed it up for us since they thought the voice was too scary for kids. Typical. However, we did end up getting the wonderful Neil Crone, who certainly did another fantastic take on the character. So, all was not lost. Number 89. Sodor's Legend of the Lost Treasure was certainly a great movie, and it was John Hurt himself that provided the voice for Sailor John, the main antagonist of the movie. Eddie Redmayne also voiced Ryan as a guest role, so this is quite possibly one of Thomas's most prestigious pieces of media ever. Number 90. In the railway series, Stuart and Falcon, soon to be renamed Peter Sam and Sir Handel respectively, were sold by their old railway, the Mid-Sodor, to the Sodor Aluminium Company. However, the crazy thing is that the Mid-Sodor were so desperate for money that they sold both engines for a total of only $50. That's $25 each. Number 91. Before ending in 2021 and spiralling into that awful reboot we all know and hate, Thomas was actually the second longest running show in the USA, second only to Sesame Street. Number 92. Classic Thomas was actually very expensive to fund. The first series alone cost an estimated $1 million, and Britt Allcroft had to mortgage her house to help fund it. Although a lot of people feel Britt Allcroft made some unfair lawsuits and similar, I think this shows that, ultimately, she was dedicated to simply making the series the best it could be. Number 93. Numerous historical figures have been referenced in Thomas. The current list includes Christopher Columbus, Jesse James, Harry Houdini, William Shakespeare, and Theodore Roosevelt. Number 94. The tender in the town of Great Waterton is actually a prop from the Season 3 episode, Tender Engines, as one of the tenders Henry was given by Duck. This prop's inclusion in the movie, so many years later, has also sparked a wonderful fan story by The Buried Truck. I'd highly recommend you check that one out. Number 95. Numerous characters have died in the show, mostly ghost engines. However, some human characters have also sadly passed away in universe, notably King Godred, Captain Callas, and more recently, Tasha Stone. Smudger and Proteus can also be assumed dead, although it's never outright confirmed. And then of course, there's all the scrapped engines. Number 96. Out of a whopping 584 episodes in the show, Thomas has appeared in 518, Gordon has appeared in 454, Cranky in 149, and Toby in 173. And no, I didn't count. This fact was sourced from the trivia page on the Thomas Community Central Wiki. To whoever worked out those numbers, you're a freaking legend. Number 97. My favourite episode of the show, Rusty and the Boulder, was the first and last episode to ever use pyrotechnics, culminating in that epic scene of the shed being blown to bits by the rampaging Boulder. Did I ever mention how much I love that episode? Number 98. An obscure railway series character, Sigurd of Arlesdale, is an engine who works on the miniature railway with Mike, Rex and Bert. However, she is only ever referenced in the iOS book, and is named after a badass heroine from Sodor's medieval period. Number 99. 
Thomas would likely never have existed if we hadn't had World War II. Wilbert, when making a toy for his son, initially wanted to make Henry or Gordon. However, due to wartime shortages, he had to make the smaller J-50 tank engine we mentioned before. And thus, Thomas was born. Number 100. Making the 100th fact, three specials in the history of Thomas have had name changes. Tatmar was originally going to be called Thomas and the Rainbow Railway. The Great Discovery was going to be leader of the track, and Dear the Diesels was initially going to be Charge of the Steam Brigade, in reference to a famous poem by Alfred Tennyson. I'm particularly sad that this last one was changed. It was an epic title. Number 101. To end things with a pretty amazing fact, it turns out that you'd need 136.5 hours to watch all the Thomas content that there is to watch, at least officially, including specials and spin-off content like Jack and the Pack. That evens out to almost six straight days of viewing. If anyone wants to attempt a marathon of that, then it's your funeral, not mine. Well, we did it. 101 facts that you probably didn't know, at least some of them. If you knew over 60 of these, then you're certainly a hardcore Thomas fan. Over 80, and I'm just flat out impressed. Over 90, that's a little worrying. If you knew all 101, then I'd recommend going to your local therapist double quick. I want to say massive thanks to everyone who supplied facts to this video. Some were provided by friends of mine, some were provided by the Community Central Wiki, and some were provided by interviews on the Wiki and SIF. Once again, thanks to Kaiki for sponsoring today's video. Please go and check out their store for all your merchandising needs. There probably won't be a video this coming week, this one took so much time to make. Although I don't ask this as much as I used to, I think I'll make an exception here and just ask that you share this video with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. Hitting 5,000 by January 2022 would mean 5,000 subs in my first year of YouTube, and that's quite an accomplishment. To everyone who's already subbed, thank you so much. This video is dedicated to each and every one of you. And with that said, this has been the Thomas Cynic, thank you for watching, and until the next time, have a good one. Thank you.